Hello and welcome to Forgotten Friends. Today we continue my Scourge of War Waterloo playthrough with the third episode covering the King of Westphalia, where we take command of Jerome Bonaparte's full division to take the Chateau of Hougoumont and the Allied right flank as a diversion for Delon's attack. But now, the history. If you don't want to see the history, a time will come up on your screen. Wait for it. Now! And the silence of the morning was shattered by cannon fire at 11.30, marking the beginning of the battle and the attack on Hougoumont. But one of Napoleon's largest divisions, the 6th Division, under Riley's 2nd Corps, under the command of his brother, Jerome Bonaparte. The attack was supposed to be a diversion, so the Duke would weaken his center by moving in reserves to support his flank. However, the Prince had other plans for the 7,000 men of his division, and the attack started with Baudouin's brigade attacking through the orchard. Baudouin's brigade took nearly four hours to clear the orchard, and after that the skirmishers retreated to the chateau. As Baudouin's brigade left the orchard and attacked the chateau itself, Baudouin was immediately killed in the open ground between the orchard and the six-foot high wall, and command was given to Colonel Cabiers of the 1st ER Leger. The French were now 30 yards from the chateau. The only obstacle between them was the open ground where Baudouin was killed. Any attempts to scale the wall were met with crossfire from the buildings of the chateau. Despite this, Jerome, conscious of his family name, insisted upon taking the chateau, sending in the 2nd Brigade under Brigadier General Soy. But why would he do this? And a point to prove. As after the 1812 Russian campaign, Napoleon wrote a letter to Jerome saying, You are hateful to me. Your conduct disgusts me. I know no one so base, so stupid, so cowardly. You are destitute of virtue, talent, and resources. End quote. To prove him wrong, he was to take the chateau, and so would continue the attack, no matter the cost. Against the advice of his chief of staff, General Gilnot. Hello and welcome back to those of you who didn't want to hear the history. We have now entered the scenario and we are waiting for our orders of the day. Moving to the chateau, we notice that Baudouin's brigade has pushed back the skirmishers. But going to the open ground, we notice that Baudouin has met his fate in the open ground in front of the chateau, just like in the history. The chateau of Hougoumont still stands, and there's a plaque where this happened. But just as we leave Baudouin's brigade, a message arrives by courier, saying the same thing. As Baudouin's brigade enters into line of battle, and begins the Mont General, I regret to inform you that Marshal Baudouin has been killed outside the walls of the chateau. His replacement is en route from the southeast. You are to attack the British until Doron makes his assault. As both sides line up for battle, exchanging fire over the walls of the chateau, I send out the rightmost battalion to clear the wall of its occupants by charging it, in order to lessen the fire upon my troops. As I have little cover to hide behind, my troops stop to form up, attempting to form a line, but I tell them to charge. As my troops approach the walls, in the background we can see the approach of the British foot guard to reinforce the chateau. As my troops go over the wall, they easily push back the light infantry to the garrison them. while moving my troops to get in range to charge the other light infantry. They are slowed while the rest of the battalion scale the wall, and so I tell them to move forward at the double as shells explode overhead. Eventually my troops get into range and they charge the light infantry. All the while another battalion attempts to charge the chateau, but they cannot from that direction. And so I tell them to halt and form line. a volley of fire upon the chateau. The charge of my other unit is continued. However, this unit of light infantry is far more resilient than the other one, but my charge is slowed by troops still struggling on the wall, and while they charge, they take fire from units firing from within the chateau. 
and the enemy light infantry take nearly 50% casualties before falling back into the chateau. back I send my troops back to the orchard for some well needed rest as they've taken high casualties. They cannot return so easily as my men have formed a line of battle blocking them and while they attempt to leave the walls men get caught up trying to descend them and so again I tell them to move at the double to little effect but not wanting to go across the gauntlet of fire from the enemy in the chateau I decide to tell my men to just run the green run which is essentially time to unit to retreat to my selected point. But regardless of my attempts to preserve as many men as I could, they take heavy casualties as they retreat through my lines. Once they arrive, we see the arrival of the Guards Brigade, shown by their leader, John Bing, approaching from the side of the chateau. And so the units will not get the rest, I hope they would. And so I move them in immediately to the hedges to block the guards, before going back to my line to find my 2nd Brigade and deploy them. After I move forward the Sawyer's Brigade, in order to in theory rest the rest of my battalion, I decide to spur off two skirmish companies from it, into the hedges to block the Guards Brigade. Though they're reluctant at first, I take command of them, and they are forced to rush into the woods. Knowing now that the fight's going to get a lot harder, the guards look to the ambulances to find them empty? As the British foot guards were employed by Wellington, the troops attacking the chateau looked to the ambulances as they knew the contest would become bloody, but as the English foot guard, supported by English cannon on the ridge, approached, most of the drivers had never heard that fire before, and so they became nervous under the fire of the English batteries, unharnessed their horses, or cut the traces, and galloped away. I quickly move my skirmishers into the bushes to stop off the guards before they can get around our flank, moving them up at the double as to catch the guards while still in column formation, to in theory cause more casualties to them before they can react. All the while I move up the parent battalion into the orchard so they can rest up. Changing my plans of wanting to head off the guards with one light company, I stop them right as they get on their flank and into range to cause more casualties while sending the other company to head off the brigade, also telling them to move at the double as to giving them more time to delay the incoming guardsmen, but they are reluctant due to their difficult task, and so I force them using the take command function, and then ordering them again to move up to head off the guard brigade. Unfortunately, the plan fails on both accords, as even though they're in column, the guardsmen aren't taking as many casualties as I hoped. As my other skirmish company rushes into line, they stop and form into line themselves to counter the skirmishers, as I look back to our line to see Soy's brigade is moving up, despite the heavy artillery fire. Thankfully, due to the size of the battalion, the Scots guards take a long time to deploy into line, giving my skirmishers ample time to fire upon them and to get out of range before they can get engaged in melee.
but John Boone continues without them. Something's afoot. Or a hand. Are the Pedapadasi in order? The men are carrying out the orders as we speak. It's a shame this will be the end of my brigade and my reputation. But after what you showed me, it'll all be worth it. Bien, you must return to the Scotsman in the chateau and persuade him that the Duke wants him to fall back to the ridge if the chateau is put under too much pressure. Now return to your lines before your men and officers become suspicious. Yes, sir. Long with the king and down with the pretender. We can see Bing is going to his meeting with Riley. Narrowly missing the advancing troops of Sora's brigade, as my skirmishers continue to open fire upon the flank of the Scots Guard, making sure to target the file closers and the sergeants. The Scots Guards quickly lose cohesion and begin to fall back, as fire continues to pour down upon their flank. Although the exchange of fire is not bloodless for the skirmishers, as the second skirmish company is taking a lot of fire from the Guard Battalion. In the meantime, the battalion in front of the gates of Hugamon is taking extreme fire, the casualties are mounting. And so eventually, Captain Poulange shows up to rally them. Whilst having him selected, I take note of the casualties my men are taking while att attempting to take the chateau, and so I plan to spread out my brigade in order to put more effective fire upon the chateau. By first going to the battalion farthest right of my line, who have been under extreme artillery fire, as there are three Allied batteries concentrated near Huguenot, I suddenly look away as one of the shells explodes overhead. Seeing it out of the corner of my eye, I think it's something else. The four turns to the left of my line again, seeing that in their lost cohesion, the guards are taking mass casualties, and so his brigade has come in to support us in taking the chateau. But seeing that the skirmishers are doing sufficiently, I tell the brigade to halt and lie down to take cover from the artillery, hoping that I can rout the two guards' battalion with only the skirmishers. As the Scots guard begin to withdraw, the Coldstream guard cover their retreat. Hoping to push back the Scots guard, I move in the closest line battalion to open fire upon their flank, but even though the terrain is seemingly open, they have difficulty finding the range, and so I move in closer and closer to no avail, and not wanting to risk the risky proposition of charging the guard, even though they're withdrawn. Learning from past experiences in the Gettysburg playthrough that withdrawing units are not always about to break, but even while I was trying to make them fire upon the guard, they are still more concerned about the men in the chateau. So I relent and allow them to continue to fire upon the chateau, moving again to the troops farthest right of my line. The AI saw it fit to move them forward in calm formation, but this would prove deadly to them with the massed allied batteries to their front, firing shot into the ridge into their massed ranks. And so I countermand that order and tell them to fall back into the orchard, seeing the massed body pile already at their feet, before going left of my line once again. Seeing that the parent battalion is helping their light companies, and feeling confident that is firing and advancing towards them. But in the meantime, the Coldstream Guard are moving up to support the Scots Guard. I quickly again go and check on the right side of my line, make sure that the battalion is still following my orders to return to the orchard, before going to check on Sir Brigade, who has now decided to, to do an all-out attack on the left flank of the chateau. While I approve of this initiative, I decide to tone down the attack to a probing attack instead. An all out attack would allow us to take the chateau. However, however, once captured, I don't really have the manpower to take the Allied right flank. All the while, John Bing is moving right in front of his battalion, shouting encouraging words to his brigade, encouraging them to hold fast against the new, fresh French brigade, despite their overwhelming odds. Now, finally, the brigade in front of the gate house of Hugamon is now in range of the guards and will open fire upon them. But as soon as they face the guards, they suddenly become out of range, and giving them the order to advance 100 meters, they decide to interpret that order as moving to the right. And so I decide to tell them to move forward, but through pathing they decide to move in a very stupid fashion, so I decide to move them again. This time I decide to outwit them by telling them to move to the chateau, and then move them out of the guard. And they actually follow my orders, and they rush up right close to the guards, taking huge amounts of fire on their flank. Keep up your fire! Man. We face first in this war. Remember Linzel's men. Remember Lin. It's more of them. So hold the brigade and more on the flank. Pay no mind to them. Now I'm in command. Companies A through D. Focus your fire on the frogs near the farmhouse. Not soon after my troops open fire upon the guard's flank, they break. But there's still one battalion left. Never mind the troops firing from the Chateau of Hugamal, inflicting heavy casualties on my flank. So I tell my troops to face the culture and guard as Bing goes to support his other battalion, bravely galloping along our line of fire. 
But seeing that the Coldstream Guard are not holding, due to the flanking fire from Soy's Brigade, which just like the Scots Guard, quickly disorganizes them, and so I move my troops to keep shooting at Hugamal. while sending a few more battalions from Soy's Brigade to attack the Chateau, as well as the remaining Guard battalions. But while the Coldstream Guard are holding off my brigades, the Scots Guard reform into a thick line. Seeing this, I jump at the opportunity and move up one of my artillery batteries to more effectively target them, giving them orders to prioritize targeting infantry and moving them just behind my infantry. All the while, General Bing retreats into the Chateau itself no doubt to deliver those fake orders. Not long after telling my artillery to move up, the Coldstream Guard begin to fall back, and the battalions of Soy's Brigade begin to fire in advance. And to encourage them to fall back, I send up my skirmishers to the bushes where I intend to move them originally, in order to cover the flank of the troops that are currently in front of the gatehouse, taking heavy fire on their flank. Despite this recent support, the battalion in front of the gatehouse begin to withdraw after taking such large amounts of casualties, but I'm having none of this, and I tell them to reform. Checking up on my rightmost company, being targeted heavily by artillery, seeing they're still in place, I move back to my left flank, and the cold streamers break giving Soy's Brigade an opportunity to advance, which they quickly snap up, firing and advancing and sending up skirmish companies, ordering them to advance farther to encourage the Guardsmen to retreat to the ridge, while the Guardsmen make a counterattack themselves. I check on the progress of my artillery battery, which is making slow progress, so I tell them to advance on the double, which isn't much faster than their regular speed. And the fight on my left continues, as the Coltrane Guard open fire at my leftmost battalion, only using the right of their line. Because something I learned just recently is that every single sprite has its own target as a cold stream guard lie behind them once again. Here we see that John Bing has managed to report to McDonald as a guard to advance, getting him into a better position to target our brigade. But then something hopeful happens as one of the light companies that are garrisoning Hugenot retreats. Going back to the battle, however, the guard advances, taking heavy casualties as they do so, pivoting the line to target my various skirmish companies. But as their regiment is so large, it takes them forever to move giving my men ample time to put massive fire upon them. But then as they form up, they fire one mass volley cuts down many of my skirmishers, but then as flanking fire comes in, the troops reform once again at the double, taking mass casualties as they do so. Given a bit of breathing room, Soy moves his brigade forward to put more pressure upon the guard battalions. Going back to inspect my troops by the chateau, I move the rightmost battalion to give them shelter from the cannon fire they're under, as there are three batteries on the ridge pouring fire upon my troops. to my left 
again, the guards will fall on once again, as more troops seem to come as reinforcements. But then they come rushing through our lines, straight towards our men. But still their formation is broken up. I think nothing of this until they reach our lines. And then they explain their behavior. Don't shoot! Miserenda! Get back here, you traitors! Vive la Merci, mon ami. Your rule brought so much good to the Republic. The English gave us the worst equipment pay and gave us suicide missions, like putting us in the orchard. We'll be glad to be back under the, the rule of somebody who respects the people. But as the Dutch infantry approach, they surrender to us, and we quickly take them behind our line. In response to this, the foot guard approach and form into their own line, forming line to fire another devastating volley into our brigade. All the while, Sorrow is moving amongst his brigade, shouting rallying words to them, while moving more troops up to attack. And the British foot guard carry on moving forward, probably trying to push away the light companies, as they'll break quite easily. Then coming under fire, stop and form line again. And now we zoom in to see a close up of what the guards see. Forward in the moment while I check out the battle honors on their colors. We also see the casualties my light companies are taking from the British foot guard volleys. Before I go over to my cannon battery to see how they're doing and who they're targeting. So far, they haven't inflicted as many casualties as I would have hoped, despite how close the foot guards are, which is their main target, as you can see in the top left hand corner, as they are first in the list. But while the British foot guard continue their weird fire and advance like pattern, they finally get close enough so some of my light companies begin to withdraw, as Bing delivers more orders to MacDonald when he goes to the chateau, satisfied that the guard will hold the line. Going back to my men to the chateau, the casualties are racking up as some of my troops eventually can't stand any longer and break, so I'm moving the battalion that's been put in the orchard to replace them. As they rush into position, the battalion just to their right can't stand any longer and also withdraws. However, thankfully, it's a short withdrawal into the orchard, and so I can commit them once again. Satisfied that my first brigade won't break attacking Huguenot, I move back to my left flank to see how the guards are doing, and we can see the mass casualties taken by them as they continue to advance and my men fire volleys into them. It now is nearly missing their entire first rank, as my troops fire and advance into them, causing more casualties than I left most companies. But not wanting to get too close, I decide to tell them to halt and form a more organized line. Noticing a small battalion in the orchard, I decide to put it in between the two battalions already engaging in Hugamon, as capturing the chateau is a major victory point for this mission. Wanting them to stay in the line longer, I order the two light companies I split off from them in the beginning of the battle to return to their parent battalion, which was said battalion, all the while moving up the two battalions I previously withdrew. For 
going back to the British Footguard to see the casualties they've sustained and to estimate how long they will hold. By now their entire first rank from their center to their left is entirely destroyed. Few men from their leftmost company's rear rank are being taken out too. Take note of this, Bing moves up to rally his forces to stay, to hold for just that little bit longer until hopefully the Duke sends reinforcements. Then I check the artillery once again to see their casualty count, but it's only around 7 casualties, but this doesn't matter as our fire of carcass shot over Hugamon has taken effect. I see that the fire is communicating with itself from the haystack to the roof of the chateau. You must still keep your men in those parts to which the fire does not reach. Take care that no men are lost by falling on the roof or floors. After they will have fallen in, occupy the ruined walls inside of the garden, particularly if it should be possible for the enemy to pass through the embers to the inside of the house. The interior of the chateau had become choked with smoke. Embers flew about, burning our faces and hands blinding us as the flames chased me and my fellows out from the chateau's bar and into the courtyard. The hellish flames soon spawned the tortured screams of the wounded who cannot escape from them, but still haunt my nightmares this very day. Wanting to increase the pressure on the chateau, I move more of my brigade forward, spreading them out to the largest field of fire I can. Then I move up one of my units to take the garden wall, getting the first rank over it to get extremely good cover. then moving another unit up to follow suit, to a different part of the garden wall. Although they'll be under direct artillery fire, I think it'd be well worth it to get them to flank the chateau. Sawyer's brigade is following suit, taking a couple battalions from his brigade and moving them forward, briefly checking on my retreating units to see if they would return. Seeing that they wouldn't, I check for my commander. I first select Riley, but then it turns out it isn't Brom, so I select the go to me button, which selects your top commander, which is the person you're playing as. Concerned that I don't have enough points, I return to my line, where I see one of the commanders doing something rather stupid. Another one of the battalions retreats. Get back! The English will cut you down in a moment if you stay here! I've lost the entire brigade. My family is just over the same shape. Staying here, I'll get away from you. Part of your soul is dead. This is a senseless waste of human life. So there's still time to redeem yourself. Especially if we take that farmhouse. But finally, the officer regains his senses and returns to his brigade. And not a moment too soon as the battalions in line break. And so he sends up two more. While he goes to rally the other battalion, who quickly reform. As another attack on the wall occurs, one of the battalions goes to the gates. As the French made another assault on the walls, a small party of hulking men with axes broke away from one of the battalions and charged the gates and began hacking away at them. We directed our fire upon them, however they soon reached them and they were broke out of the courtyard. The fire of the troops in the courtyard spared none of them, except a brother boy who escaped the melee, hiding in a barn and weeping. I continue my assault upon the walls, allowing my troops to scale them, to allow the first rank to get over, to increase the effectiveness of their muskets. Soldiers 
Soy moves in the rest of his brigade after shattering the Guards' brigade, pouring deadly fire upon the flank of the chateau, and sending in much needed reserves to the front of the chateau. Checking the map, I wonder why two of my regiments are withdrawing, so I decide to follow them, see what these potentially treacherous regiments are doing. Eventually, I select one, checking its ammunition. Noticing that it is empty, I realize they're going back for ammunition, and so I allow them to continue on to refill their ammunition. move in to attack the chateau itself, as Soy rushes about encouraging his men to continue the attack. And the same brigade commander, who rushed up earlier into the open ground, continues his same habit. But now, since there's units nearby to support him, I allow him to carry on. Checking out the garrison of Hougamont, I notice that the foot guards have now entered Hougamont itself, making it a much harder objective to take. So I check up on the two regiments who are looking for ammunition still, eager to get them back into the fight. Moving the one with ammunition back to the orchard and the other to rush forward to get ammunition. Then as soon as they have ammunition, sending them to the orchard. then sending the ammunition wagon forward so my men can resupply faster. And then I notice two of my battalions are standing around, and so I commit them, wanting to get the most firepower onto the chateau as I possibly can. Then General Soy, crossing that line from bravery to stupidity, crosses right in front of the chateau to rally one of his battalions before I send him back, not wanting him to be killed. Then he goes to rally the closest battalion to the chateau. Then I send back the other brigade commander. And straighten out my line. But as I do so, Soy attempts once again, and is cut down. Ah! The general's been hit! Quickly, get up to the ambulances! Where the hell are all the drivers? You, go into the ambulances and look for a tourniquet. Let's hope Pierre has enough cavalry to spare to look for those damn deserters. As Soy is taken to the rear of the line, I continue the attack on the chateau making sure the captain stays in the rear of the line so that he doesn't get killed as well. We've lost too many historical characters so far. Moving back this other division as it is too exposed compared to the others, it invites artillery fire upon them. But then more good things happen as some of the guards withdraw from the chateau, leaving the last of the foot guard and the Nassau grenadier. Encouraged by this, I go back to my alliance to move up the brigade, but I go up again to see what the regiment has retreated. Moving up once again to see that the captain is trying to go in front of our lines once again. And so I move him to the rear of our line. I don't want another officer as a casualty.
Then I go back to check our score. Seeing that it is so little worries me. As I follow the two regiments with new ammunition forward, I notice our ammunition is trying to withdraw, and so I move them into position once again, then going up to my line to check out how our infantry are doing. And despite their overwhelming odds, they are doing extremely well, most of them having scores in the hundreds, probably from engaging the guard companies earlier, since these are the members of Soy's brigade. Seeing troops in the rear of our line not firing, I move them forward to any part of the chateau that's in not engaged by musket fire. Before going around and checking the other units of our line to make sure they're engaged, we can see now that the chateau is fully engulfed in flames as smoke bursts from four places in the rooftop as I go to see the two units that remain as its garrison, MacDonald and the Grenadiers, as the batteries on the ridges continue to bombard my forces. As I back away to command more forces forward, the fire and shot inside the chateau become too much for the Grenadiers, and they withdraw, MacDonald closely on their heels, and I charge my men forth to capture the chateau, to claim this prize that we paid so dearly for in blood, and so I rush in three battalions before the Allies can retake it. As you can see, there's a light company just outside the walls to the north, and hopefully we can put fire upon them, as well as the batteries behind them if they're in range. As as soon as we take the chateau, it comes under heavy bombardment from the artillery on the ridge. Let's hope that Wellington's quote is right about the closing of the gates of Waterloo being the cause of the winning of the Battle of Waterloo. Three battalions that I garrisoned Hugemont with are swiftly joined by many of the skirmish companies and line battalions from Soy's brigade. As I go back to Captain Boulange, the leader of Baudouin's former brigade, more battalions move up to go and join them. So I tell him to go on to an attack stance and check his score, which is a worrying minus 95. But by now, every single brigade of my division are going into the chateau, which is slightly worrisome because it's damaged so much by the artillery, both ours and the Allied as well as the leader of Soy's former brigade is joining them. But as we garrison the walls, we pour deadly fire upon the light company in front of the Allied artillery, as McDonald returns to the rear of his lines. But as their fire is so intense, and casualties mount quickly, MacDonald returns to Gallium. While that's going on, I move the battalion to guard the left flank of the chateau, and to potentially attack the troops to our front, as the other objective we have in this mission is to take the Allied right flank. Now I check the battalions which garrison Hugemont, as well as the damages sustained so far. And it seems that everybody has taken it so far, and so I start to put my commanders on a defense objective, so we can hold the fort. Seeing now that it's safe in front of the chateau, I move Jerome forward as I move the brigade commanders into the chateau itself.
As we zoom into the light company, the casualties they've sustained are huge. As our dead begin to live with the road, so Madonna, who originally fell back, returns to the line once again. And so I again check the damage of the fort, seeing that it's taken a lot of cannon fire. I have to get rid of those batteries, or my entire brigade will be destroyed in the ruins of Hudema. After briefly checking the allied right flank to make sure the battalions guarding are far away enough that they won't interfere, I move forward the closest battalion on my left flank to sweep away the batteries and the remaining troops to our front, quickly taking command of them. And so I decide to have my Napoleon version of Pickett's Charge, with my one battalion charging up the ridge against the three artillery batteries, telling them to advance to get out of the way of the chateau, and form into column, moving forward at the double. As I see them approach, the light infantry company withdraws. As my men press the ridge, most of the cannon limber up rather than risk their gun being captured. As they move forward, their battery commander stands in defiance while the last of his battery retreats. He still stands there as our troops pa get into arm's length and then pass by him. We don't capture him as he's in shock. As our troops rush by him to get to the next battery. And they too withdraw as our men narrowly pass by their battery commander, rushing to the next and final British battery before they get to the Dutch battery. The Allied Army is in shock as it stands, with, stands in awe of the one battalion that managed to push back the three batteries. stand firm and load canister as the final guard battalion fire into their flank. Men, for the double canister! Those English may run, for they have nothing to lose this day but their pride. If the French come to our homes, they will commit atrocities to our families. Don't you stand for that? Good! Fire! With the Dutch firing into our, into our close ranks and the guards firing into our flank, the battalion is finally pushed back. And being so tired with only a few casualties, as they withdraw, the guards put more fire into their rear. But the battalion has done its job, it pushed back the artillery, so the fire on the chateau has been lessened. Inspired by the brigade, a couple more battalions have moved forward. One to engage the English on, a, on their right flank, and the other just to the garden wall and the chief de battalion from Soy's former brigade attempts to move up to rally them, but I tell him to stop as it is too late. Preparing for the next part of the battle, I select my battery of artillery to weaken the right flank of the allies, so then I can push on it with infantry battalions. But a battalion on our left that was inspired by the charging other battalion, and a British infantry is moving in to engage them.
Eventually going through the field, I eventually noticed the battalion had reformed and is being canistered by the Dutch artillery and falling back. The shift of battalion has moved up once again to attempt to rally them, but I tell him to move back along with the battalion, who's already withdrawing. But before I can relay the order, they break. I go around and then I eventually check the chateau's integrity and it's nearly 50% damaged, but with the artillery so far away, it'll lessen its damage. Finally noticing that there's been an engagement on my left wing with the infantry battalions on the allied right flank, I decide to move my battery back a little bit to lower the risk of them being charged and the guns being captured and I look to the engagement on our right, that my brigade is being attacked by the Yorkshire West Riding Regiment and the Royal Welsh are coming up to support them. But with my artillery moving into position, I think that their support will be sufficient. But wanting their support now or never, I tell them to move forward out the double. As a battery wheels into position, we can see the devastation in front of the Chateau of Hougamont. The chief de battalion is still running in front of the chateau, despite the extreme danger. Probably going to r rally the one battalion engaged on our left, but I tell him to return to the chateau. But no sooner than I move away from that, than the battalion is forming into position, unlimbering to fire upon the two British battalions. No doubt seeing the battery roll into place, the Royal Welsh Fusiliers break. The hellish bombardment is unleashed upon them. But unfortunately, the firing and advancing of the Yorkshire West Riding Regiment forces my battalion back, and it retreats to the side of the chateau. Unfortunately, the Royal Welsh soon rally. But the brigade is being put under an intense artillery fire. As we stood in the line, the cannon opened up on us, and at one point I saw a cannonball coming straight from my head. My first reaction was to duck, but I'm not forbade that, and so I stood at attention, and the ball took the head off and fell next to me. After breaking my battalion, the Royal Welsh Fusiliers make a counterattack, and the Yorkshire West Riding joins them. But the chief of battalion moves up to rally my forces, again as usual, late and so I have to move him back. But luckily enough, my battalion reforms outside the walls of Hougamont, which we can see by the arrow. Luckily, my battery of artillery is putting a pounding on the two battalions. And the two battalions advance, no matter however they advance, they will lose. Either attacking the chateau, which took me about two brigades to capture, or toward my battery, who would put a massive amount of canister into them. Going back to the chateau, I check the damage once again. Seeing that it hasn't moved much, I carry on. I read 
inform my battalion to meet the two battalions of infantry charging the chateau and move the chief to battalion inside the chateau itself. Thankfully, they've stopped, allowing the artillery to put a few more shells into them. which my battalion happily engages, as I'll be easily defeated, and the Chateau's new garrison opens fire as well. Meanwhile, on my right, one of my battalions is going forward to engage the Dutch artillery, probably moving to shooting range so they won't accomplish much, and so eventually I tell them to fall back, as well as the other one, telling them to fall back into the orchard to cover them from artillery. Going back to my center, I check on the chateau once again, which is now at 50% properly, and I'm getting nervous that the chateau will break. And the firefight just outside continues, as my troops fire in advance towards the skirmishers. Eventually I tell them to halt as the Yorkshire West Riding fire a volley into them, wanting them to form a cohesive line as they'll take less casualties. As the shifted battalion moves up once again to actually rally my troops this time, I move over to my artillery battery which is doing quite well, at a score of 105, and my men confident of a victory start firing and advancing once again. I go over to Jerome to check my score once again, and noticing that it's over 1000, I feel a bit more confident. Feeling confident once again, my battalion fires and advances, but takes a massive amount of casualties doing so. And so I go back to my lines and check my points, which are now 12,000. The battalion attacking forms line, hoping to decrease the casualties they're taking, but can't stand for long out due to the casualties they've taken. And two volleys, one from the Yorkshire men and one from the Welsh, push them back, hoping that they would pour enough fire onto them. We can see there are some fire that the York, Yorkshire men have taken, and some from the Welsh as well. And the skirmishers probably took the casualties from the battalion, or from the walls of the chateau. As our officer falls back, the Royal Welsh Fusiliers make an attack on the chateau, but I'm not worried because it took my entire division to take the chateau, and is supported by artillery. But soon after they stop, I fire some volleys into the chateau itself, supported by their light company and the Yorkshire West Riding. So checking up on my right flank, I notice that one of my battalions has stood there out in the open under shell fire. For I don't know how long, but when I get to them, their score is minus 91, which means they've been taking heavy shell fire. And so I withdraw them behind the chateau before going over to my artillery to see how they're doing and where their targets are. It seems the majority of them are targeting the Royal Welsh as their brigade attacks a corner of the chateau, then taking note of the two brigades attacking us. Note that those are the only forces defending their right flank, and so I look over to it, and all I see is an officer riding off to somewhere unknown. And so I go back to, to my lines to see if there's any regiments in reserve, and all I see are two battalions retreating. 
I quickly check if they're retreating to somewhere on the map, but they're not. So I go to the chateau to select one of the garrison to make an attack. The brigade attacking the corner of the chateau is now firing organized volleys into it. Not having much effect I couldn't imagine, but bravo for trying and showing off discipline, I guess. Anyway, I select some of the units from the garrison to make my super sneaky attack, as another officer realizes the same thing. Sir, reports would have it those two battalions attacking the chateau are from the Allies' right flank. If we take a few battalions up the ridge, the Allies might think we, the big attack is coming from there and move their reserves to the flank. After Jerome calls the two battalions to move on to our left flank to prepare for the attack, looking at the British battalions attacking the chateau, and despite their really organized volumes, our troops are not budging from the chateau, checking over our points at, we're getting near to 2,000. But the Allied batteries are continuing to pound Hougamont, and we shan't be able to hold it for long. One of the two battalions moves to attack the battalions attacking the chateau, while the other will join an officer who will move on to attack the victory point on the right flank of the Allies. I was wondering where the rest of the brigade that's guarding the Allied right went, and so checking my map, I noticed they're attacking our cavalry reserves, who aren't doing much to stop them. I grab another brigade from the orchard who've been sitting around the majority of the battle to attack the two British battalions to our front, which was the other reason why I was looking at the map, to find any reserves we had and supporting them with the other battalion that's in reserve. Going over to my artillery, I checked their score so far, and they're nearly at 200, only from t attacking the battalions to their front. Now I begin to check Hugamon quite frequently, as the damage is becoming quite severe, and I'm becoming worried. and my battalions continue their move to attack the Allied right flank. Passing by the corpse of General Soy, as soon as they get close to the British battalions, I tell them to form line and prepare for battle. I do the same thing with the other battalion, as I'll be used as a distraction while I move up the other two brigades, which I do now. Then going to the chateau, I select an officer who will lead this attack, and I choose General Soy's replacement who is always looking for glory.
five Italians are closing into a battle with the Royal Welsh Fusiliers and their skirmish company and the 2nd Yorkshire West Riding. I move to outflank them, and the 3rd Battalion on our line moves up and, learning from my previous experience dealing with the Iron Brigade on the 1st and Ridge, on how to quickly disperse the units. To start this fight, I tell my men to fire organized volleys into the flank of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. It's a little effect, but it looks a little nicer, I think. Seeing the less than stellar effectiveness of the volley, I tell my men to move in a little closer. General Snowy sneaks by. While following him, I see the remainder of the English Brigade holding the Allied right, attacking Pierre's Lancers, but in a square formation, as they are so close to cavalry. As more fire pours out from, the, from my battalions into the Royal Welsh Fusilier, my final battalion sneaks by them, going to the Allied right victory point, hoping to get the most victory points I can. I rush the battalion to the victory point, doing the same thing with Soy's replacement. But luckily enough, as they pass, the British do nothing to stop them, as they're already in a pretty precarious position, being targeted by three battalions and the Chateau. Speaking of the Chateau, it has not much left in it, as it's taking heavy damage. But still it's loyal garrison, poor pours fire into 
the battalions on its flank. And still I rush my final battalion to the Allied victory point, thinking they'll rest up as soon as they get there. So it'll all be worth it in the end. At this point I was worried that I wouldn't have enough troops to hold the point. But in the end it didn't matter, as the scenario ended in an inconclusive fight. Which I thought went pretty co conclusively as I retook the Chateau of Hougamont. But the battle is an inconclusive fight, at 1,923 points. But I would argue that it would be a, a loss for us, because we've taken far more casualties than the enemy. At 2,925 to to the enemy's casualties of 2,254. Now to go over our units in more detail. You sure that's gonna work? I think it's rickety as all hell. And what's this stone bunk out of for? Two reasons. This organization is not made of money, if you haven't noticed. And a concentration of brass in this quantity would be suspicious anywhere outside of London or the industrial bases. The other reason is, when the machine works, the amount of energy it produces will cause a shockwave in theory. So who's gonna test the time machine first? Well, for a start, it's called the Porter Engine, or a time distortion device, and I will be going. Dr. Collins, set the time and coordinates for Pennsylvania, July 1st, 1863, at around 7.30, but only for a short time. It's ready, sir. All right, you lot. Get to cover. I'm at Gettysburg. Yeah, Gettysburg. Wait, I, it works. I, I think the only way to find out is to find the Union Cavalry. But how to blend in? Well, I'll grab my notebook and take down the events. Let's go to the crowd to make sure there's no parade or something went wrong. Time is it now? 7:31. Why? I'm taking this down in my journal. The first shot in the Battle of Gettysburg, July 1st, 1863, at 7.31. Battle. This is but a mere skirmish, sir. Did I say battle? I meant to say skirmish. But what is a skirmish but a small battle? Fair point. Wait, where did you go? Was it a rebel spy? I think it was a rebel spy. I'll have to get out of here before somebody notices I'm gone. It worked! Wilbur, you were right! How was it? Do not fret, comrades. Today will be the beginning of the end of the Empire.